Walden, The Ballad of Thorough is presented in part by Eon US, an innovative low-cost energy provider supplying schools, families, and businesses in the United States with natural gas and electric power. You can learn more about our educational and green initiatives online at eon-us.com. By Earth Day Network in Washington, D.C., coordinating Earth Day activities worldwide since 1970. To have your school or group participate, you can visit us online at earthday.net. By American Forests, protecting America's trees and forests since 1875. American Forests is online at americanforests.org. His real first name is actually David, but upon graduating Harvard in 1837, he changed his name to Henry. He was fluent in several languages. He dreamed of being a successful writer, but was spurned by the publishers of his day. Settling in his hometown of Concord, he started his own school, which failed soon after opening. His hero was his older brother, John, who died soon after the school failed. His passing devastated Henry, so he returned to work in his family's pencil factory. Falling in love with his late brother's girlfriend, Henry proposed to Ellen Sewell, who turned him down. The saddened and depressed Henry retreated to the beloved woods that gave him so much comfort. While cooking fish over a small campfire, he accidentally started a forest fire and burned down a hundred acres of woods near Concord. Humiliated and angry, he went to work as a caretaker and tutor for the children of his friend, the great writer Ralph Waldo Emerson. After failing to pay his taxes, the city officials put him in jail. After his release and with Emerson's help, the 28-year-old failed writer Henry David Thoreau escaped society by building a small cabin deep in Walden Woods to write a book in tribute to his brother John. Hi, I'm Michael Jonathan, folk singer, tree hugger. I wrote the Walden play. I wrote it because I wanted my kids to meet a hero of mine, Henry David Thoreau. The setting is 1847, it's September. Henry just spent the last two years, two months, and two days of his life in a little cabin that he built. It was on a piece of property that Ralph Waldo Emerson had loaned for his use so he could have this great experiment, leaving society, leaving the world around him to write, to really contemplate nature, and to take life down to its very barest of essentials, as he put it. In an age of oil wars and global warming concerns, hybrid cars, biofuels, what Thoreau wrote is so vital for our day. It's just that people have heard his name, they've maybe heard a quote or two, they don't really know anything about the man. So this is a play about his life, this is a play about his spirit and what he wrote. We're gonna begin our journey though with some facts about Thoreau and his life. First thing we wanna do is visit the actual replica of the actual cabin that he lived in for those two years. It's right over this hill, so just follow along with me. It's kinda of cool to check out. It's a beautiful autumn day. We're at Walden Pond, not too far out of Boston, Massachusetts. It's a real place. It's a real pond. This is a replica of the little cabin that Henry David Thoreau spent two years, two months, and two days of his life in the late 1840s. It's a solid little thing, nothing really special. It's not very big. But during that short amount of time, Henry David Thoreau wrote in his journals almost daily. He played his flute almost daily. He absorbed the beauty of nature and the woods that surrounded him. And in that short amount of time, Henry David Thoreau changed literary history with his book Walden and became the environmental forefather of the great green movement that we're experiencing worldwide today. It's a half mile walk from the replica of the cabin to the actual cabin site here in Walden Woods. We're just a little ways from the pond. 
this part of the woods was very special to Emerson especially. He was very concerned about the encroachment of the cities and the, the growing territories of houses and factories. And so Emerson took it upon himself to actually start buying up plots of land along Walden Pond to protect the woods. After a while, Henry had the idea that he wanted to get away from the society that he was having trouble with dealing with. And uh, it was Emerson that said that he could build his little cabin on the shores of Walden Pond on Emerson's property. This is the actual site that Henry built his cabin. And it's a beautiful section of the woods. Back here, he took soil from the hillside and brought it forward by hand and created a nice level platform for his cabin. It's a reverent site. It's a very peaceful and beautiful place and you can see why Henry wanted to move out here and, and do his writing. What we did for the sake of this documentary is we invited probably one of the most uh, respected Thoreau scholars in North America. His name is Tom Blanding, and he doesn't live all that far from Walden <laughs> Pond, do you? No, no, I'm just a few miles down the road. We pronounce his name Thoreau. Thoreau, not, like not, a thorough job. We live in an age of concerns about global warming and oil wars and hybrid cars and biofuels. Thoreau really saw this coming. He may not have envisioned it as we see it today, but he saw the value of nature and its decimation as something serious. Yes, he was a prophet without honor in his own country uh, because his reputation, it took several generations for his reputation to uh, develop after his death. He was so far ahead of his time. So he, he was not recognized as a successful writer while he was alive? No. Uh, his first book, A Week on the Concord of Merrimack, the publisher returned the bulk of that edition of 1,000 copies to Thoreau, unsold. It didn't sell. Yeah, yeah it published at his own expense. And, and, he and spent, Wal Walden was not a big seller. No, it wasn't a big seller either, but that first book, he, he took all those unsold copies and piled them up in his... Uh, attic study in his parents' home, and at the end of the day, he sat down to his journal and said, I now have a library of nearly 900 volumes, over 700 of which I wrote myself. <laughs> <laughs> so if, uh, if uh, Henry David Thoreau was a TV star, he'd have been canceled. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah.